In this video, we are going to talk about the posterior fossa malformation. First, we are going to talk about Chiari malformation, Dandy Walker malformation, and ultimately, we are going to talk about Jobert syndrome. What is posterior fossa? Posterior fossa is a portion of the skull that is located at the back of the head and it is below the tentorium cerebri. You can see that region in red. What is the part of the brain which is encapsulated by the posterior fossa? So, it's the cerebellum portion of the brainstem and fourth ventricle which is inside the posterior fossa. So the posterior fossa malformation lead to hydrocephalus, motor deficits and developmental delays. First we'll talk about Dandy Walker malformation which is a congenital brain malformation where there is a cystic dilation of the fourth ventricle, hypoplasia and agenesis of the cerebellar vermis and most importantly enlargement of the posterior fossa. So the back of the head is bulged out. One of the way to diagnose it is basically MRI. So let us look at an MRI image of normal brain and a Dandy Walker malformation. Let us prime our eyes with the normal MRI. Here you can see just after the pons, you can see the fourth ventricle in triangular shape. Note these two fissures, primary fissure and pyramidal uh, pre-pyramidal fissure divides the cerebellum in three different halves. In case of basically the in, in case of the malformation, what happens is there is a distinct shortening or shrinkage of any one of these halves. So this is the foramen magenti. So in the Dandy Walker malformation, there is a small cerebellum or hypoplastic cerebellum. Here you can see there is a cystic dilation of the fourth ventricle. So if you look at the posterior fossa from a horizontal view, one can see the cerebellum here and here one can appreciate the hypoplastic cerebellar vermis along with that huge dilated uh, fourth ventricle in, in near and the, uh, which has pushed away the posterior fossa. Symptoms include delayed motor milestones, hypotonia that means uh, weak muscle tone and then motor coordination difficulties which results in ataxia. There is Chiari malformation which is due to the displacement of this portion of cerebellum through the foramen of magnum. Here is the skull, here is the cerebellum, here is the brain stem, here is the spinal cord and here is the foramen magnum. In this case, the cerebellum slides down the foramen magnum into the spinal canal and this is the Chiari malformation. This leads to excessive pressure on the brain stem and it blocks the normal flow of the cerebrospinal fluid. Now what happens is there are different types of Chiari malformation like Chiari type 1, type 2, 3 and 4. Among them type 1 and type 2 are most common. In type 1 malformation cerebellar tonsil is displaced downwards. In type 2 which is more severe along with cerebellar tonsil there is displacement of the brainstem, fourth ventricle and the cerebellum. So the symptoms often associates with headache which is often prominent at the back of the head and worsens with coughing or straining. There could be neck pain, nausea or vomiting, muscle weakness, dizziness, balance and coordination problem, vision and hearing disturbances, fine motor skill problems and ultimately in severe cases there could be difficulty in swallowing or speaking. The diagnosis can be done using MRI. So here in the Chiari malformation, the yellow arrow shows there is a displacement of the cerebellar tonsil through the foramen magnum. This is quite distinct. Now in case of Chiari 2 mal malformation or Arnold Chiari malformation, so first there is meningomyelocele which is a key uh, thing is in spina bifida. So it is often associated with spina bifida and one can see that several part of the cerebellum and brainstem has descended downward from the foramen magnum. It is more prevalent in females compared to males and the reason is still not known. But anyway, the treatment involves physiotherapy, pain management and surgery. So here is a normal brain and you can see the cerebellum nicely. In Jobert syndrome, which is another kind of posterior fossa malformation, there is a hypoplastic vermis. This is more distinct in the horizontal view. In a horizontal view, one can see a molar tooth-like signature. See that yellow region? So this molar tooth-like signature is nothing but the deep intrapeduncular fossa and the elongated superior cerebellar peduncle that lead to that molar tooth-like symptom. Jobert syndrome is associated with many gene mutations such as ARL13B, CC2D2A. These are genes that regulate the primary cilium in the brain. And there are other genes which are also associated with this symptom. So I hope this video was quick and informative enough. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.